Well, hello there, and this is Auntie, and I am coming to you with a um, series that I have been wanting to do, and um, just had to find the perfect book, um, and I believe that I have. If this is your first time being here, please like, comment, and uh, subscribe to my channel, and to all of my new subscribers, thank you so much for being here and to all of my nieces and my nephews who have been waiting for me to be active on this channel. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of your patience, your love, your kindness, and your support. Um, on my, um, as many of you all know, I have another YouTube channel and on that YouTube channel, I um, do gags and reviews and all of that kind of stuff. And on this one, I want it to be, you know, more of a lifestyle type of channel where we can share ideas and moments together just as human beings where we kind of tap into um, that human side of us. Um, I have um, absolutely been going through some things. As many of you all know, I'm a mom, and I um, have a very busy life. Even though my daughter is away at college, I still have a busy life with trying to balance life and YouTube and working and all the other things that everybody else has to challenge. Um, that have, I mean, all the other things that I have in my life and all the other challenges that everybody else has as well. But as a YouTuber, sometimes it's just a little bit um, different. And so I wanted to make sure that I tapped into um, making sure that I am whole and that I am healthy. Um, I've opened up a Facebook um, channel, a Facebook page, and that has been very, very um, challenging for me. You know, most of the time as YouTubers, you don't get to meet the intimate um, part of um, your subscribers, and they don't get to meet the intimate side of you. Usually, you know, most YouTubers put up an Instagram channel, I mean, an Instagram page or something like that, or um, come out and do um, reviews. Um, or talk about, you know, whatever they want to talk of, makeup tutorials, or whatever they're doing. They usually do that, and they're doing that by uploading. Me, I try to do something a little different, having a family. Um, I am the auntie, and my subscribers I call my nieces and my nephews. And I've tried to, uh, attempted to take that to a different level, where I could um, basically reach out and touch them and they could re reach out and touch me. And over the past couple of weeks, that has become really challenging. And um, I think that, you know, a lot of times, you know, people are hurt or have um, hurts that they've grown up with. And um, sometimes they project it onto other people. Um, I also think that people don't really know who I am as a human being. And I think that, frankly, some people don't care as long as I'm feeding them the entertainment that they need from my other um, channel. That's all they want. Um, and so, you know, I have wanted to be transparent about who I am and um, create this environment um, for people to be able to express themselves and it has been an uphill battle. And, you know, yesterday I went through some things and I just was like, okay, I can't believe that I'm going through this. Um, because, you know, you let people into your private circle and sometimes they kind of slam the door in your face. I got really um, upset about it and it made me go in. It made me think about what is it in your life auntie that you may be lacking in? What is it in your life that you need to refocus on? What is it in your life that has caused you to respond this way? Um, and I don't really know what that is. And so I wanted to be encouraged. I wanted to encourage myself because I know the type of person I am. I'm the type of person who runs away from challenges. 
I am the type of person who is an introvert by nature. And so to cut people off um, for me in my life has been very easy for me to do. And I know that the things that God wants out of me is not going to allow me to run away this time. It's not going to allow me to do an about face. It's not going to allow me to put up the white flag and surrender. What God has for me is for me and what he has for those people who are attached to me is for them. And so this time I've got to stay in the fight. I have um, no other choice but to do that. And so usually on Sundays, I try to take some time to meditate and to be by myself and to kind of reflect <coughs> before I have to go back to work the next week. And so I decided that I would share that time with you all reading this book that I picked up um, to encourage myself from Crystal Evan Hurst, She's Still Here. Um, and so it is, the book, it says, Rescuing the Girl in You. And so, you know, dealing with these challenges, I figured that there's a little girl in me. There's a part of me that um, needs to be tapped again. Maybe that little girl in me didn't get everything that she needed to get as a little girl. Um, maybe that little girl in me is afraid of being vulnerable. She's afraid of opening herself up to people because she's been hurt so many times. I know that woman in me, that's who I am. And so on here, um, on, on this channel, I'm gonna be very transparent with who I am. Probably some of you all have never even heard me talk this way, but you know what? I'm going to go um, as the Spirit leads me. I thank um, God so much for my moderator, Lena, who sent me a text message to encourage me, and it just brought me to tears. And I know that, you know, some people believe that tears aren't real or that people are trying to manipulate or control um, situations by that. So I was glad that she did it privately so that I could tap into the woman that I am. I thank her so much. Lena, I thank you so much for doing that because I needed that. Um, I really did because I have to realize that, okay, let me make sure that, um, um, where's Lena? Where's Lena? Just in case. <laughs> um, and so, you know, um, I really want to be transparent and I want to be open because I believe that anytime you react a certain way um, to something that, you know, there's something else that's broken or something else that needs to be tapped into. Something else is going on in the inside of your auntie. Yes, I've been working a lot of hours. Yes, my daughter is in school with new challenges um, starting the new semester. And yes, um, I have a lot on my plate, but yes, there is still something that is broken and something that I need to deal with. It's something that I need to, you know, make sure I tap into. So anyway, here's the book. I'm hoping that you all can go out and get it. I picked this book up from Target. It, um, the price of it, I believe, is $16.96. I'm not saying go get it. I'm just saying if you want to go and get it, please um, feel free to do so. Um, they have a little bit of um, a bio on her, so let me read that. Crystal Evan Hurst um, co-authored the best-selling Kingdom Woman with her father, author and pastor Tony Evans. She reaches a wide audience spreading at conferences, writing for Proverbs 31 ministries and teaching and reaching women in her home church. Crystal also cultivates hearts and commands chaos as the chief operating officer at the Hearst household. That's cute. I like that. She and her husband, Jesse, adore their three hungry boys, two adult girls, one son in love, and a gorgeous granddaughter. Find Crystal sharing her journey on crystalavonhurst.com. Okay, so she's in the ministry, okay? Um, and some of us are familiar with Pastor um, Tony Evans and some of us not. I think he does like a series or something like that on marriage and ministry and stuff like that. So she should be, you know, okay, all right, let's, you know, let's get into this, okay, shall we? Yes, we shall. 
So she has a whole lot of different people in here who have said things about her from um, her parents to Kirk and Tammy Franklin, Erica Campbell, um, Sarah Jakes Robert, Liz Curtis Hills, Bruce Wilkinson. Um, yeah, she's got quite a few people who have shouted out her book and said really good things about it. And so we're going to begin, okay? Let me, um... Oh, and I have uh, with me for my meditation time. <laughs> now, you may not have it with you, but I got it with me. Is a glass of wine out of my um, glass that one of my moderators, Sarah, sent to me. Bae, best auntie ever. And so I'm drinking me a little bit of, um, what is this? This is, whatever. It's said, wait. <laughs> Okay, wait a minute. I got to think of what this. This is Moscato. Okay, and it's a brand of Moscato that my niece got me hooked on, okay? And she ain't even got no business drinking, but that tail, you know, okay, she can check a look, all right? And so, basically, I'm going to have me a little bit of this Moscato. I have my dinner already cooking, and I get to have it, okay? So, cheers to um, finding out about the woman that is inside of us. As you all can see, I have my candles, excuse me, going in the background because I love to meditate with my candles and stuff like that. So, cheers to a good read, all right? Cling, cling, cling. Thank you, Sarah, for the class. I love her. Ooh. Mmm. That is so good. Clang, clang, clang. Thank you, Norma Star. <laughs> so, let's see. So, she has a dedication. She says, to my original sister circle, my mother, Lois, my sister Priscilla, my aunt Elizabeth, and my friend Michelle, who never let me forget that I was worth the work of the rescue and who never stopped believing that the best of the girl in me was still there. And to my oldest daughter, Caress, who asked me the hard question to which I pray this book is the answer. Oh, that is beautiful. So this appears to have um, six parts. This book is broken up into parts. And so it has six parts to it. And in each part, it has, can y'all see that? A section in it. So what we're going to read, let's see. So she has a forward by Pr Priscilla Shriver. And then she has acknowledgement. And then she has an open letter to my readers. And then part one is fight for your life. Is pages 20 through, through pages 60. I don't know if I'm going to read all of that. But what I will do is make sure that whatever section that I read out of this book, that I stop on, you know, a clean section so that we can make sure when we pick up again next Sunday at five o'clock, we'll be right back in, you know, we'll be starting right back in the same place. So I think that would you all be interested in hearing her open letter to my reader? If so, put a one on there if you want to hear that or if you would like me to just continue on with um, part one, fight for your life. So if you would like to um, have me read the open letter, put a one. If you don't want me to read the open letter, put a two. Okay, can y'all hear me? One. It ain't but a few of you out here, one. Okay, that's two, three, try to see if we can get a quorum. Okay, I'm just going to read the open letter. Okay, <laughs> I guess everybody else that's out here is a little shy. So we'll just get to the open letter, shall we? Yes, we shall. Okay. I'm excited. An open letter to my readers. Now, I always bring my pages back like this because I always like to, you know, kind of, you know. Thanks, H. Stewart. I always try to, um, but anyway. So she says, an open letter to my readers. 
I love Jesus. Okay. Let me just say that up front because I know some of you will be reading these pages looking for lots of talk about him. But while this book is about what I've learned while sometimes walking with him and sometimes not, this book is more about my experiences and what God has allowed me to learn. Now, I like that. Because you don't have to be all holy roly to love God. And you don't have to write a book about God and keep mentioning his name over. Now, I like that and I respect that from her. Now, that, you, you but girl, Crystal, you starting off with the right foot with me, girl. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Makes me feel a little bit better, too, because I'm sitting up here reading this book by this Christian woman drinking this Moscato. <laughs> okay. Okay. So she says, sometimes I've learned because the school of hard knocks is a tough teacher, but a good one. Sometimes I've learned because I've chosen common sense. Many times I've learned because I decided to act as if I believe God's word is true. In this book, you will find the thread of God's story in my life and the lessons he has taught me. You will find a lot of my personal story. You will find plenty of encouragement for you as I share principles I've learned. You will find scripture, particularly at the end of each chapter, if you want to dig deeper. If you want to go even further, there is a separate body Bible study to dive into. But most of this book is written just the way I would talk to you if you met me for an early morning cup of coffee. During that coffee shop conversation, I would hope that you would feel as if you have a friend, someone who understands you, and someone who will tell you the truth. As you read this book, my prayer is that you feel the exact same way. Part of the words I've written will be gentle and kind. You may cry as you see yourself and your story in these pages. Some parts of this book will leave you smiling and feeling inspired because I will become, I will come alongside you as a cheerleader. But I have to tell you that some of my words will be direct and firm. I ain't scared. Why? Because real friends tell their friends the truth, even when it's not easy for them to hear it. I hope you pause at the end of every chapter for a little R&R &R, reflections for the rescue is an opportunity for you to take a break and process your journey as you join me on your own. I encourage you to take the time to journal, think or pray, choosing to do your part to rescue the girl in you. That's so beautifully written. That is so beautifully written. I'm, I'm liking Crystal. My prayer is that at the end of this book, you have motive, you are motivated to get to the business of choosing to believe in the gift of you. My hope is that you will act as if the girl in you is still there and be willing to do whatever it takes to per participate in her rescue. Most important, I pray that you will choose to give the gift of understanding, encouragement, and truth to someone else who needs to believe that her life still matters we girls need each other. Your partner in the rescue effort, Crystal. How freaking beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? I mean, she's like, bring somebody else along for the journey. And that's what I'm doing with you all. I'm reading this book. So I, I already know I'm on point with this. See, this ain't number God. So the first one is called, we are going now, y'all, into the first part, first chapter. Um, and it is called Part One, Fight for Your Life. It says, I can impress you with my achievements or I share my struggle and pray that it leads to your transformation, Kirk Franklin. You cannot amputate your history from your destiny because it is your redemption. Yes! Call one, fight for your life. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm fighting for my life. Chapter one, break a leg or two. You are a masterpiece. Okay, ladies, let's go ahead on and get into this. Now, if I start crying up on this mofo, you know what? Pray for a sister. We'll keep it going. We'll keep it pushing, okay? We will keep it pushing. 
God, if you would just break both my legs, that would make everything better. I was driving down the road tollway in Dallas, headed home from another day at work where I had spent hours stuffed in a cubicle. Don't we know about that? Checking a million boxes with a red pen, my brain was about to explode. I hated my job. If this cotton freaking book ain't for me, alrighty. Let me tell you, God works in mysterious ways. And then he works in ways where he's right up, open, dead, smack up in your cotton freaking face. Within the first couple of sentences, she is already tapped into where I am. Sometimes I feel like I hate my job. Let me keep reading because I already feel a tear about to come. The clock crawled from the moment I sat in my chair until the time it was reasonable for me to run out the door at the end of the day. I felt as if I were gasping for air. And that's why I asked God to break my legs. I made it clear that I didn't want him to take my life or allow me to be injured in a way that, that permanently altered my life and I certainly did not want an accident that marred my face or scarred me in any ways. I just wanted to hit the rest reset button and I figured one or two broken legs would do the trick. I am stressed out, overwhelmed, off track mode of thinking. I wish for the shelter of a hospital room, a justifiable excuse. A, justifi a justifiable excuse for a break to provide an escape. And some time to assess where I had gotten off track and to formulate a plan for making my life more like I imagined it would be. I was like a crazy woman talking to him in the car out loud. Tears streaming down my face and my heart racing at the thought that he might actually allow me to pray my way right into the hospital. Now, you know things is bad when you are praying for something unfortunate to come upon yourself. You, <sighs> I hadn't intended to end up in a job I didn't love. Many of us is that all caught in freaking testimony. I didn't intend. I'm gonna put my blanket over myself. I did not intend to end up in a job that I hated. I did not intend to end up in something. Oh my goodness! If this book ain't typing, oh my, yes, sir. If this book ain't right up in my door frame. I mean, they knocking, they in my door frame, but I ain't let them in yet. Oh my God. How many of us wish that we could be doing something different? Being somebody, oh my God, living out our life dream. Oh my God, y'all, this book is in my door frame. I ain't let Crystal in all the way in yet, but I'm telling you right now, she's in my door frame and she's a knock, knock, knocking. Yes, Norma Star, she's a knock. I hadn't intended to be a single parent. Oh my God. I hadn't intended to have a heart still raw and exposed from the hurt imposed on it by other people. It had never been my dream to fight my way through the academic challenges and personal struggles of my college years. At that point, the most difficult season of my life, only to end up on the other side of the so-called victory of graduation feeling deflated. Yes, Sarah! 
I have filled my balloon of hopes with expectations and dreams only to realize that I had not tied it tightly enough and that it had escaped. As a young 20-something-year-old girl, it hadn't been that long since I'd felt full of hope, promise, and excitement. So I was taken by surprise to find I now spent most of my working hours feeling resentful, hopeless, and miserably bored each and every day. Oh, my God. Strong in my pain with her fingers. Singing my life with her words. Killing me softly with her words. Killing me softly with this book telling my whole life in each word killing me softly with her song oh my god i gotta read that again so I was taken by surprise to find I now spend most of my waking hours feeling resentful, hopeless, and miserably bored each and every day. Where had I gone? Where was the girl who once lived in anticipation of the beauty of her life? How did I lose her and what would I and, and how would I ever get her back? I would love to tell you that in those moments driving down the freeway and thinking like a crazy person, I magically gained clarity on how I'd gotten off track. I like to say that I never got off track again, but I, I'd love to tell you that I figured all of it out right then and that I had it all figured out since. The truth is I haven't solved everything. But I have gained an understanding over time, and that's what I want to share with you in these pages. I want to reassure you that the best of the girl in you is still there. She still has a chance to live her life. God dang it, I should have brought a box of tissue. I am trying to keep it together through this book, y'all. Could go, could it go? In that moment when I was just short of being delusional, or maybe I was delusional and didn't know it, I didn't recognize my life. Whatever I thought my life was going to be, this wasn't it. And I thought what I needed was time out of the rat race, a break or two, pun intended, to figure things out. I was off track. And I didn't know how to get back on except for a desperate plea to God. Do something to help me. All I knew was that I was not living my life. I got to keep it together. I got to keep it together. The life I'd hoped for, the life I've dreamed of, the life I still desperately wanted to have. It felt like the girl I wanted to be was dying a slow, suffocating death. And I was clueless as how to help her. It hadn't always been like that, though. I recall moments when my girl felt alive and easily able to breathe. My parents encouraged me to live with wonder. My teachers gave me the courage to explore. My friends allowed me the chance to play and my world offered me the opportunity to learn and grow. Full Fall and spring days were filled with homework, school activities, and play with neighborhood friends. The summer months held visits to my grandparents, slumber parties with my cousins and long boring days with an occasional trip to the library. Whatever didn't satisfy me about my girlhood fired up the desires of my heart, desires I figured I would honor when I was old enough. You know when I was grown and free. You know that escaping childhood meant giving up naps, free room and board, and summers off. <laughs> 
From the vantage point of childhood, I could hope and dream, and I had to picture of what I thought my grown-up life might look like. I imagined my future family, my future career, and the future places I live. I still have the paper with the names of my 12 kids written on it. I ain't do all that. I ain't, I ain't want all that. Okay? I did not want all of that. Okay. <laughs> I figured I would either be a teacher or a famous actress and that I live close to my family but I have a second home near the beach. You know, we all want that home near the beach, don't we? <laughs> every book I read and every person I met introduced me to more of the world that I could experience. I thought of the people I might one day meet, the places I might one day travel, and the things I may one day do. And while I have yet to meet Julia Roberts, explore Australia, or release my own album, I haven't forgotten the thoughts that went through my head before I shifted into adulthood. My thoughts, dreams, and expectations had room to run. Don't get me wrong, the picture wasn't always pristine. I haven't forgotten about the hard parts, the cruelty of other kids, the stinging words of some adults, the torrential trip through my teenage years. My youth had wasn't perfect, but less than perfect. Didn't stop me from growing. I expected my childhood for what, I accepted my childhood for what it was, part of the process, my pro progress through life. I learned, le mm -mm. I leaned into the living room, believing that all the beautiful and unpleasant parts of my current and future picture would someday make sense if I just kept going, I believed in the idea of a masterpiece. I believed that all parts of my life, the good, the bad, and the ugly, could come together in the hands of the person who gave me life. I believed through ups and downs that he knew what he was doing and that he would make something beautiful of my life in, in his time. The day in that car, the day in that car, I didn't self-destruct. I chose to keep driving. Even while the tears streamed down my face, I cried out to God for help. I kept going. was still there. Even if she seemed lost, invisible, and forgotten, I decided to hope against hope that God could still make a masterpiece out of her. Maybe you felt the same way. You daggone right, Crystal. You daggone right, Crystal. You, yes, I have felt this way. I still feel this way in some areas of my life. Yes, Crystal. You're at my threshold, boo. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you felt the same way. Maybe you've been a crazy woman like me and begged God to help you fix your life, get unstuck and get it together. Maybe you've thought long and hard about what extreme measure you could take to stop the pain and heartache. Maybe you imagined that by now you'd have a career you love, finances that kept you content, or a marriage made in heaven. Maybe you thought You'd have a house that felt like home, a child who brought you joy, or a deep, solid faith you could stand on. Maybe you are tired of waiting on a dream that seems overdue and possibly unattainable. I can, it can be puzzling to realize that your very present and real life doesn't resemble your past expectations. It can be bewildering when your life looks nothing like the life you pictured. It can be frustrating, but it's also common. Every woman I know has had at least one moment of cognitive dis, um, cognitive dissolvance in her life. She comes face to face with the girl she is and compares her with the girl she wanted to be, and it just doesn't line up. Or maybe she never knew exactly what she wanted in her life, but simply knows deep down that who or where she is now isn't it. She believes there must be more. She's so she's faced with a choice. She can do nothing and continue in disappointment, shame, frustration, inactivity, or regret. Or she can recalibrate. Yes, God. Yes! And get to the business of believing that her work, life is a work of art, a masterpiece. Every part of me 
is a vision and a portrait of Mona, Mona Lisa. Every part of me is beautiful and I honestly see I'm a work of art, I'm a masterpiece. Yes! She can choose to be brave enough to believe that a uniquely beautiful life is still hers to have. And she can choose to be bold enough to grab hold of the hope she has for the girl inside, the girl who's still there, the girl who dreamed of and deserves her beautiful life. Notice I didn't say perfect. How do I know? Because I have yet to meet someone who claims 100% perfect life 100% of the time. And I know because my own life hasn't been perfect. At times, I've witnessed my own life morph unrecognizably into a life that made me sad, desperate, and dumb, and numb. I drifted away from being the girl of my dreams or simply turned my back on her Pretending that she, pretending that her life didn't matter. But time and time again, Renee, you're going to have to go back and look, boo, because we'd have been too far to go back now. <laughs> Welcome, sweetie. By the time, but, but time and time again, I've sensed her calling me, begging me to answer, to acknowledge her existence and honor the life that is still hers to lead. And I believe. Her life does matter. Her beautiful life is still possible. I've learned that the living of that beautiful life takes practice. It takes time to cultivate. I've learned that my picture blends and takes the shape as I choose to continue journeying through life. Even if I make mistakes or hard times come, I've learned to accept the process of becoming a part of my progress. Most important, I've learned that my uniquely beautiful life is an original work of art designed for my good and for the glory of the one who orchestrated my existence. Even if it doesn't look like it at this moment, you are allowed to be both a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously. Your life matters. The girl of your dream matters. No matter, excuse me, how far you think you've drifted away from her, she is still there. Oh my God. God. Okay, so in the side, she has some little side things here. And so I'm going to read a couple of those to you. She says, be brave enough to believe that a uniquely beautiful life can be yours. And in this one, she says, you are allowed to be both a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously. You, my friend, are a work of art, and your life can be beautiful. As an artist will tell you, the key to, to creating a wonderful work of art is to be committed to the process. Beautiful creations take time. Sometimes they can be messy. And the artist often wrestles with how to produce a winning representation of what lives in the heart, mind, and soul. The same is true for you. The key to living your beautiful life is to keep going. You must decide not to hang up, hang, oh, not to get hung up or stuck. Don't get bogged down in the mess that comes with making a masterpiece. Choose to wrestle for the win. Choose to wrestle for the win. When I was a girl, I thought the choices would be easy, the decisions would be straightforward, and that life as I desired to live it would simply fall into my lap. Most of us already know that's not how life works. Life is a series of experiences, some good, some not so good, some Parts we cruise through and others we wrestle through as we attempt to get a grip on our stories. And let's be honest, we don't like to wrestle. That's true. That's so true. But often the winning is in the wrestling. And it's only as we continue to live that we see how all these experiences fit together to make a complete picture. And you just have to keep going. 
and believe the ideal of your masterpiece. Is this life? That is my question. I am driving down the Dallas tollway, toll road, tollway and asking God to put a hurting on me. And I've asked it over and over again. Is this really my life? Is this a question you've asked? Yeah, Crystal, it is. I think it's a question that all of us have asked. If this, question, if this is a question you've asked or are asking because your life isn't lining up with the hopes you harbored as girls, teenager, or young woman, I hope so. I hope that every now and again you stop to ask that question and that when you do, you are willing to wrestle for the win is the answer is no. If the answer is no. I hope that you are willing to take note of every part of your story through the various seasons of life. Some parts will look like strokes of genius. Others may seem random, insignificant, and straight up wrong. Keep going. Do the work. Believe in the idea of a masterpiece. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us in new Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. The girl you wanted to be or the girl you never were sure you could become is already a divinely inspired masterpiece. Every day that you live, you have the opportunity to work to do the work of honoring the plan God has for you. Maybe when you fell off your track, you didn't ask God to break your legs. Maybe you're a little bit more stable than I was and didn't invite God to start an apocalypse <laughs> in your life just because you were facing a difficult season. Or maybe your off track seasons have been terribly worse. Either way, I want you to know that you can get back on track. And I want you to know that you have a friend I count it as my mission and privilege to share lessons learned from my journey so that you can know you are not the only girl who's felt lost in the middle of her life. Is this your life? Yes. Yes, it is. But this is me, my new friend, leaning in close with a smile to tell you this. It's not too late to make it a life you love. Oh my goodness. If this is not encouraging, this sister right here is giving it to us up close and personal, straight up in our face. Straight up in my face. Straight up in my face. This was me. This may even be you. I'm in the middle of my life. I'm 53 years old and in the middle of my life. I have so many blessings in my life. God has been so good to me. But yet there has been times when I have said, you know what God? <laughs> one asking God to get sick. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for not realizing that that little girl in me can still realize her dreams at 53 years old. Crystal, thank you, baby. This book is expiring the dog crap out of me. And it's right up in my face. No, I did not anticipate being a single mother. No, I didn't. I ain't plan at all. I didn't plan to be a mother at all. At all. No, I did not intend on having a job that I don't particularly like that much. But I wanted to make more money. And I've learned over time that all money ain't good money. And yes, the Bible says that every promotion comes from God. But is every promotion of God? See, God gives us an opportunity, okay, if you will. 
He gives us an opportunity to make our own choices. He's a God that gives us free will. He doesn't break our arms or our legs and makes make us do things that we don't want to do. That's not the God that we serve and the God that we love. But in the process of making decisions and choices that you think are good for your life, sometimes you're going to make decisions that you just don't want to stick behind. This is my life. This is my life. And I'm so happy and blessed. Like she said, you know, there are times when you're happy and you're blessed. And, you, you know, but then there are other parts of your life that you feel like, I don't like that part of my life. And for some reason, we lean more to the negative than we do to the positive of the things that are going on in our life. But I thank you, Sister Crystal, for walking with me today as my nieces walk with me today, holding hands to come to a place a rescue. I am a masterpiece, wonderfully and perfectly made through and by God. And you just reminded me, oh my God, y'all. Like, this is so good and we are only up to <laughs> they put my glasses on. We are only up to, we just read chapter one. She has some reflections um, for the rescue. She says, one, remember. So I'm going to show that to you all in case you want to go back and take a screenshot of it. So she says, remember, you are allowed to be both a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously. And that's what I am today. I stand today with my hand lifted and I say, you know what? I'm a masterpiece and a work in progress. That's exactly who I am today. I acknowledge that, God. I acknowledge that. <laughs> yes! Reflect. Have you ever had a break my break my legs God moment? What did that moment teach you? Do you believe in the idea of a masterpiece for your life? Why or why not? And what made you pick pick up this book? What is happening in your life that makes you want to hit the reset button? I answered that question at the beginning of the read. Crystal, before I even start reading, I answered that question. Feeling uptight and anxious about what people say and what people do. Not having control over my emotions, missing my, my emotions and missing sleep. Because I have allowed myself to be vulnerable and to be transparent before people and I feel like they are dogging me out and treating me like I ain't nothing. Thank you, Crystal, for asking that question. Have I ever had a moment in my life, Crystal, where I have felt like, you know, it's a break my leg moment? Yeah, I think that time is now. Do you believe in the idea of a masterpiece for your life? I am confident in the masterpiece for my life. Respond. You are a masterpiece. Write down three uniquely beautiful things about the girl in you. Get the book, girl, so we could go through this together. Because I'm telling you, look how I done messed it up. I done threw it. Now, you could tell when I love a book or with a book. It's just because I mess up. <laughs> I mess the book up. Please go and get this book, y'all, so that we could go through this every Sunday at 5 o'clock. Um, Crystal Evans Hurst. Wow. This is a phenomenal read. 
Thank you all so much for being here. We're not going to go into another chapter because we're already going into an hour. Maybe next week I won't, you know, be talking so much and I won't be saying so much. But make sure, you know, you come out with your favorite glass of wine and your blanket or whatever it is that makes you comfortable. Like I said, again, you can see I have my candles lit and the big six wick candle has like a little baby powdery smell and the little white white one is a compliment to that and i love to burn candles i absolutely love to burn them and get my little wine in thank you all so much for being here thank you to sarah and to lena um for moderating this i really do appreciate you all i know you're a moderator on my other channel but i sure click that button when i saw y'all tells come on here so y'all can moderate on here because i think that right now we only have you know like around 11 people look like 20 people have been here but you know what i think that this is going to end up growing up and, and just blowing up into a much bigger thing oh my god i so appreciate you all so much and cheers cling, to all of us finding out you know um finding out of what kind of masterpiece we are for doing the work and for rescuing ourselves. I am so, oh, you welcome, y'all. Y'all so welcome. This has been delightful. Cheers, y'all. See you next Sunday. Make sure you share this video on all of your social media platforms. If you have Facebook, please copy the link and share it with your girlfriends and everybody so that we can kind of do this together. Um, I never re even really asked. Um, uh, ask for people to really share my stuff because it's so raunchy on my other channel you know what I'm saying <laughs> but please share this with your Facebook friends and everybody else share this y'all with the sister girls who are broken because I'm telling you on my other channel I am constantly taking emails from women who are broken and who don't understand and don't know who they are just struggling through life, whether it be unemployment, um, a bad relationship, sick children. There's so many women who need to hear me read this book. So please, you all, share this on your social platforms so that all the women that need this can get this. Thank you all so much. Now I'm going to go back to cooking my ribs and all the other stuff that I have to cook. Excellent. I'm definitely sharing this. This is going to grow beautifully just like our dreams. Oh, thank you, Norma Star. Thank you all so much. Love you all.